So at the beginning of this section, we defined the transition probability, the transition probability over one step, pij. And then in the example you've just seen on the two-state Markov chain, there we calculated a two-step transition probability. That is, what's the probability that we move from i to somewhere else in the middle and then to j? So a transition over two steps. So let's have a look more closely about what we were doing when we calculated a multiple-step transition probability. So what did we actually do in the last section? Well, what we did is that we found a two-step transition probability, which we said we were going to use the notation pij2. So that's a two-step transition from i to j, and we said that we could do it by summing over all length two paths from i to j. So a length two path from i to j looks like i to somewhere, let's call it k, and then to j. That's what a length two path from i to j looks like. And so the probability of that is first you have to go from i to k to do the first part, and then you have to do from k to j. And that gets you from i to j in two steps, i to k and k to j. But that middle state, k, can be any of the states. So we're going to have to sum up all those probabilities. That's going to be sum over all states, k. So that's actually the kind of general expression for what we did in the last subsection. We calculated pij2 by being the sum over k of pik, pkj. Now, this expression here ought to uh, look familiar to you because it's the ijth entry of the matrix P squared. Now, let's think about that for a moment. So remember that we said that, that we could write all the transition probabilities, P, I, J, into a matrix P. Then if you think about the rules for how you multiply two matrices by each other, right, with the left-hand matrix you go across a row, and with the right-hand matrix you go down a column, and you multiply the row entry by the column entry, and then add them all up. And that's precisely what this sum here is, right? That's exactly the rule for how you multiply together a matrix by another matrix. Here, both matrices are P. So to put this another way, if we write kind of P2 for the matrix of two-step transition probabilities, then what we're saying here is that we can find them all by doing a matrix multiplication, because P2, the matrix of two-step transition probabilities, is equal to P squared, that is, the transition matrix multiplied by itself. So that was why it was so useful to write the transition probabilities in a matrix, because it meant we could get the two-step transition probabilities by squaring that matrix. Perhaps you can guess where we're going to go next. We're going to look at the general case. And so here, let's look at theorem 5.1. If we write Pijn for an n-step transition probability, where previously n was 2, that means we have to sum over all the length n paths from i to j. And so you can see that's what we have in this expression here, right? We're going from i to k1, then k1 to k2, then k2 to k3, then dot, 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 then kn minus 2 to kn minus 1, then kn minus 1 to j. And that's a length n path from i to j. And so if we sum the probabilities of all of those by summing over all the intermediate steps, k1 up to kn minus 1, that's how we can get an n-step transition probability for n bigger than 2. We just sum over all the paths of the correct length from i to j. And yet again, this is just a generalisation of the previous formula in the sense that that's the expression for how you put the matrix to an nth power, as in we're multiplying the matrix P by itself n times in that expression. So again, we can find the n-step 
transition probabilities by saying the matrix of them is the matrix P to the power of N. That is P times P times P times P. So this has kind of given us two ways to find n-step transition probabilities, right? If you just want to find one n-step transition probability, then this way is the easiest one, which is sum the probabilities of all the length n paths between i and j. So if you want to find the n-step transition probability pijn, sum over all the paths from i to j of the correct length. On the other hand, if you want to find all the n-step transition probabilities, then usually the easiest way to do that is just to put the matrix up to the nth power. Obviously, that's a bit of a faff to do by hand, but a computer could do that in the tiniest fraction of a second. right? If you wanted your computer to find you all the 27-step transition probabilities, you could just tell the computer, do the matrix multiplication p times itself 27 times, and it would do it. So those are the two ways that we can find n-step transition probabilities, either sum over all paths or look at a matrix power. There's a kind of a, an obvious corollary almost of this, which is called the chapman kolmogorov gorov equations. I guess this is the uh, first theorem in the course that is grand enough to have a name, although I'm not sure it totally deserves it, which is, again, a kind of another generalisation of this, which says, if you want to take a route from i to j that is of length n plus m, well, in the first n steps, you'll go from i to somewhere, let's call it k. And then in the remaining m steps, you'll have to make your way back, that is, from k to j. And that intermediate step k can be any of them, so we sum over all of them. So again, that's saying the same thing. To get from i to j in n plus m steps, we get from i to somewhere in n steps, and then come back in the remaining m steps. Again, we see we have over here an expression which is for how you multiply two matrices together and so what we've got there is pn plus m on the right and pn times pm on the right sorry pn plus m on the left and pn times pm on the right obviously once we know that uh, n step transition matrices can be written as powers this statement here is obvious right because the left hand side is p to the n plus m and the right-hand side is p to the n times p to the m. But we know that because of the rules of powers, that's p to the n plus m. So both sides are equal. So once we know about this matrix form, you know, it's almost too obvious to even be worth saying. But that's the chapman kolmogorov equations. We will mention them again in the course. So finally, let's go back to the two-state broken printer question from uh, subsection 5.2. So we worked out a two-step transition probability by hand by summing over all the paths from 1 to 1 of length 2. But we could have found all the two-step transition probabilities at once by taking the transition matrix, which you might remember was that, and multiplying it by itself. And I prepared the answer to this matrix multiplication earlier. But you can check that if you multiply that matrix P by itself, this is what you get. And previously, in the other section, we wanted P112, which is this, the bottom right element. And if you check back, you'll see that we saw it was beta alpha plus 1 minus beta squared. So we managed to get the same answers both ways. One, by summing over all paths of the right length. And two, by doing a matrix multiplication.